Hey everybody, Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com, back to do another talk to the tape. I know uh, we don't do two videos in a week very often, but I had a little extra time this week and obviously a lot to talk about, unfortunately a lot of it bad, from this Raiders game, so I wanted to uh, have the chance to, to go over another topic with you guys. We talked about the run game in yesterday's video, today we're talking about the pass game and a look at Josh Dobbs, and hopefully, obviously, Ben Roethlisberger plays it the rest of the year, so we won't see Dobbs until training camp of 2019. Um, but I wanted to take a look at the the quarter and a half that he worked and just kind of the, the good and the bad, mostly the bad today and um, some of the struggles that he had just because it's really our first look at him uh, in regular season action, in extensive action, and uh, look at some of the struggles that he had three plays we're going to break down today. Looking at the first one here, uh, just a very general general accuracy issue on this play, trying to hit this little drive route here to Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, wide open, clean platform to throw from, and just throws it right behind Juju. And for this play, uh, I, I wouldn't expect Juju to settle. Um, he's not needing to sit in his own coverage where there are defenders around him. He's got to find the window. Um, it's a shallow, you know, crossing route. There's no defender in the area. You can keep running through that because it is better to hit a moving target than a stationary target. It's going to help you with a yak. And you see here, if this pass is completed, likely a first down. But even if not, it's going to be third and short. And Steelers have to punt on this drive. So totally fine with Juju running, you know, Dobbs has to hit him in stride, lead him, and uh, allow for Yak, but certainly allow for the catch as well. And I think I even just saw Cam Hayward maybe a little frustrated at that one. Hayward's always on the sideline, always animated in this stuff. Where's he at? It's up here. A little frustration maybe there from Hayward. Like, that throw's got to be made, and it needs to be made from Dobbs. And it happens to every quarterback. It happens to Ben. Um, you're going to have just a bad throw, but certainly with Dobbs under the microscope, his first real action, aside from the Baltimore game where he came in through one pass and a couple of kneel downs uh, as well, uh, you know, you're going to be under the microscope. So you see the ball placement there, way too behind, clean pocket, throw you got to make, misses, and at least the third and 12. And it leads us into our next play as well, because the next play we're talking about is literally the next play of the game. This isn't an accuracy problem, it's a timing problem. And for quarterbacks in the NFL, it's all about timing, it's all about having your throws on schedule, and if you're late in the NFL, you're going to have problems. Even against, on paper, good defenses or bad defenses like Oakland was, um, if you're late, guys are going to make you pay. That's standard for any NFL defense that you're going to face. So this play here, uh, Dobbs trying to hit Washington on this uh, curl route um, right around the sticks. See Washington release here. And the ball needs to be basically coming to Washington by now. Um, because if you're late with it, and if you look, it's a little hard to tell, Dobbs hasn't even thrown the football yet, and Washington's already made his break point. It's already coming back to the football, and the corner's now responding to that and is now able to try to crash on it and make a play on the football, and Dobbs hasn't even released it. So the throw is late, and the corner is able to now you know, drive on the football, plant and drive, break the pass up, get the incompletion, forces a Steelers punt. A little harder to see on the end zone view here, but we'll take a look at it. Again, ball's got to get out on schedule. Got to get out on time. He's late with it. Creates the incompletion. One too many hitches. Ball's late. Corner's right there now. Can play the catch point. Breaks it up. Does Daryl Worley. A big 6-2 corner with good length. It's going to make that play. Going to work through Washington. But yeah, probably two or three hitches here from Dobbs. One hitch. Ball out. Got to make that throw. Basically, ball's got to be out. You know, coming to Washington by now as he's on his break. So the corner can't react to it, drive on it, and break it up like he did. It's minor. It's a fraction of a second. You know, it's one hitch versus, you know, the two hitches that he took. But that's the difference at the NFL. If you have one extra hitch, one, you know, half second, quarter second, too long before the ball gets out. That's the difference between a completion moving the sticks and an incompletion. And your, you know, special teams unit, your punting team having to come out and give the ball to the opposing offense. So one last look at it from the... Aerial view, and we'll look at our last play. All right, last one here comes in the fourth quarter. On the last drive that he had, last throw and last play, I think, that uh, Dobbs took in this one before Ben came back in. And this one, again, it's you know a relatively minor thing, but it means a world of difference in the NFL. We're not a Tennessee anymore. Can't get away with this stuff. Try and hit Juju on this out route to the sticks. And the coach's state doesn't give us the best look at it, unfortunately, but it's a ball placement issue. 
and we'll look at it uh, from the end zone view because that'll certainly give us a better view than the aerial uh, right now. But when you're throwing these out routes, you have to put it where only the receiver can get it. You've got to throw this to the outside half towards the sideline where the corner now has to work through the receiver, especially a big receiver like Juju, um, instead of throwing it inside where the corner has a better chance to make a play on it. So I'll try to time this up. Sometimes it doesn't like to pause like I want it to. But this one's thrown to the inside half when it needs to be thrown to the outside half of Juju. See how this one's inside? It's got to be to that outside shoulder. So the corner has to work through Juju instead of being inside where the corner doesn't have to work through Juju and now can make a play on the football. That's what Conley does. He breaks it up and it's incomplete. So not, not the best ball placement from Josh Dobbs on this one. So we're seeing multiple issues. The first play was just a, just a blatant miss, but the second two are more minor. One, the timing of the throw wasn't there, just a little late. And here, the ball placement, just a little off, inside shoulder versus outside shoulder. We want outside shoulder on those out routes. So, you know, the receiver's either going to make a play on if the ball's outside shoulder, or no one's going to make a play. Not going to let the corner get a chance at this one. We'll look at it a couple more times. And does this mean that Dobbs needs to be benched and get Rudolph in, in as a number two and Dobbs can ever play? No, of course not. It's one game. We're not going to overreact to one game. The Steelers made Dobbs a number two based on a large body of work from the rookie year to training camp and preseason this year. One game's not going to change that. I mean, my goodness, if you made these decisions and, and knee-jerk reactions based off of a one bad game, you depth chart would be changing every single week. You know, what if Rudolph Hat comes in and he's a number two and he has to play and struggles like Dobbs did? Do you now make Dobbs a number two? You know, so you have to have consistency and you have to have a pattern of good or poor play, let guys bounce back and just not let guys look over their shoulder every time they make a mistake saying, is this going to cost me? I mean, obviously, you know, for some backup guys, there's less margin of error than starters and, you know, everyone can be replaced. But yeah, you know, we're not going to overreact to just one game in a weird situation with Ben's status, was he coming back in? Was he not coming in? When was he going to come in? You're on the road. You know, this Dobbs being the backup quarterback, the play calling's different because you don't want Dobbs getting hurt because you're out of quarterbacks. And there's a lot of factors to go into it. So Dobbs struggled in a lot of respects. Let's be clear about that. But it's not going to change anything big picture in terms of the depth chart. At least I wouldn't expect it uh, for the remainder of the season. Now, 2019, obviously Rudolph's going to have a great opportunity to come in, compete, and you would expect him to win the backup job considering he's the heir to Ben. That would be the expectation. If it doesn't happen, that's a little concerning. But for right now, Dobbs has gotten all the reps, you know, for, for the season. Uh, Rudolph has a number three. He's working scout team, not getting a ton of reps. Uh, he's not going to jump Dobbs because of one difficult outing uh, against Oakland. So look at it one more time, wrap things up. Um, again, I wanted to check in with Dobbs just because probably not going to see him again until next year. So it's a good opportunity to kind of break down his performance. Obviously not, not a great one, but, you know, things that can be corrected. These are, you know, small issues, ball placement, timing, things that certainly can be fixed. You see a live arm, you see mobility. Um, yeah, I think we'll get there. So just wanted to show you guys that and, and, and you know, let you guys have a little insight into what I thought of Josh Dobbs' play. And again, hopefully you don't see him the rest of the year. Hopefully we're not talking about him because that means Penn State healthy and, and that's the ultimate goal. So I appreciate you guys listening and watching, whether you're doing so on YouTube, uh, Steelers Depot, or following me on Twitter at Alex underscore Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.